This is the music of the Mediterranean, as warm as the summer skies of Turkey, where it originates. We heard it on a journey through Mediterranean countries which provide us with many exciting and attractive things we eat every day. Our journey will take us through Spain, France, Sicily and Israel on the way to our final destination, Turkey. This is the scenery, typically beautiful, in the apricot growing coastal area of Spain. We have come early in the fruit season because the apricot blooms first of all the fruits. The very name apricot comes from Arabic and Greek words meaning early ripening. The tree was first introduced into Europe from China, its true home, 2,000 years ago in the time of Alexander the Great. In the dusty dry orchards, where throats as well as roots need constant irrigation, water and warmth are the two commodities the trees must have in never-ending supply. But the rains in Spain fall red, and man must use his ingenuity to make the most use of the precious, life-giving streams. Machinery of any kind is almost unknown. What the farmer needs, he makes himself, or the children do. In this instance, we see twine being made for use on local farms. Now the result of careful labor is finally gathered. Apricots, the mellow fruit of sunshine. And now France, to see a famous bridge and to hear its famous song. Yes, this is the bridge at Avignon, which stands not quite astride the mighty river Rhone, some 40 miles from its Mediterranean delta. Avignon is a fine old medieval town, which was once for a short period the home of the popes. Today, its chief importance is as the center of a rich fruit growing district. One of its biggest industries is the tourist trade. Sightseers come from all over the world to see the bridge, remembered from the Song of Childhood, or the Castle of the Popes. But this is what we've come to see, blossoms, the growing fruit which calls to our ears another old song, an English one this time, cherry ripe. Yes, cherries from the orchards around Abbey. Another delicious gift of Mediterranean sunshine to please our palate. The island of Sicily is our next call, a journey which takes us to a land which has hardly changed its mode of life in all the centuries since the Roman Empire. We look in vain for landmarks of the modern world. Here we feel time has decided to stand still. The peasants set far greater store by beauty than by hustle and progress. Craftsmen, with a skill handed down from father to son, patiently carve decorations of astounding detail on their primitive hand carts. Cars and tractors might do the farm work quicker, but what then would be left for the mason to do? Look where you will, the tempo of life is always geared to the unhurried pace of a quiet farming community. It is the almonds of Sicily we have come to see growing. Almonds cultivated amid scenery as placid and timeless as this. But serene and peaceful though we see it now, there is always over Sicily the shadow of danger and disaster from the volcano, Mount Etna. And this is the blossom we have come to find, the almond blossom adding its beauty to the tranquil scenery. In the eastern Mediterranean area, we visit Israel, the home of Jaffa oranges. Oranges will grow in most Mediterranean countries, 
but never more luscious than in Israel. Here on a coastal strip, fringed by cypresses and palms, which act as windbreaks, we find the orange groves, which lie about 25 miles north and south of Jaffa. The harvest time for Jaffa's is from late November until April. Dull weather for us, but blazing sunshine in Israel. The oranges are not picked haphazardly, but clip-tops. Great care is taken to see that the little green stem end, as it's called, is not damaged or detached from the fruit. This little disc, which you will find on all oranges, is a natural seal against decay-causing bacteria, which, if allowed to enter the fruit, would infect and ruin the orange by the time it reached you in the shops. Yes, harvesting is warm work, and when it's time for a break, it's grand to have refreshing oranges within reach of your hand. A quiet chat and cheerful laughter make a welcome pause before the picking begins again. At the packing station, the jaffas are sorted and graded before being washed. Israel exports every year about six and a half million cases of orange. Each case weighs about 90 pounds. Jaffas go about three to the pound so that we arrive at an approximate figure of 1,800 million oranges exported every year. After washing, the oranges pass over rollers, which speed up the process of drying and cleaning. Sometimes they are given a thin film of natural wax to preserve the goodness inside. Finally, the fruit is hand-wrapped and packed into cases. And it's hard to imagine any machine which could work faster than this girl. Our Mediterranean journey ends now at Turkey, in Istanbul, Constantinople that was, the fabled old capital of the Byzantine Empire. Istanbul is the only city in the world that stands astride two continents, Europe to the west, Asia to the east. It is the starting point of another surf. Horrid, mingled with the four-legged travelers, we get our chance to see Turkish people face to face. A fierce, proud race in whom family ties and love of children is strong. Looking out over the Black Sea, we find that it is really blue. The sun sparkles on the waves as our ship turns in for the shore. We are at Gerasen at last. Here is another aspect of the Turkish way of life. Under the shadow of the minarets behind the harbour, where young and old work and play and live out their lives. Gerasen is the headquarters of an old and prosperous industry the center of an export trade, fourth in importance in the Turkish economy. Can you guess? What would you expect to find growing here that flourishes in the lanes of Britain? The answer is hazelnuts, Turkish fulvets, in groves that blanket the coastline in endless miles of green. The month here is August, the start of the harvest season. The kernels of hazelnuts, besides being tasty to chew, are rich in food value with nearly 70% natural oil. And the nuts of Girison are among the very finest. The women folk of Girison have only recently ceased to veil their faces from public gaze, a practice still continued in many country districts. Their husbands may dress according to Western fashions, but many wives have very plain wardrobes. Walking through the town, we see a famous traditional dish being sold, shish kebab, a sizzling mixture of meats roasted on a revolving spit. Whenever they may, the sun-loving Turkish people take their meals in the open air. 
The tables are set today for a civic feast. Elsewhere, too, the feeling of fiesta is abroad. Towards the end of the day, villagers gather on the cliff to mark the happy season with a song and dance. To meet an ever-increasing world demand, the filbert growers are learning to modernize their methods of cultivation. Terracing the hilly slopes is a means of conserving space, and scientific research has given the farmers chemical weapons with which to fight disease and pests. But for gathering the nuts, there is no better or quicker means than the skill of the human hand. As soon as they are picked, the nuts are spread out in the sun so that the husks, the stalky ends of the nuts, can wither and drop off leaving just the shell behind. The deep bed of nuts is constantly raked and winnowed by hand, a job which continues all the time the nuts are picked. Once the nuts are husked, they are collected together and given another drying in the sun. This is because rain and the natural moistness of the Black Sea climate may induce a mould which can spoil the entire crop. The big problem in Garrison is to find enough space to spread the nuts. Somewhere there's got to be room for 35,000 tonnes of them. So we see them everywhere, by the shore, on rooftops, even in the streets themselves. Here is the first machine ever tried out in Turkey to do the job mechanically, a method which may in time spread throughout the land. The sweet filberts of Turkey find their way to 23 different countries across the globe, renewing as each new season starts a trade which was first begun more than six centuries ago. And so our journey home begins, leaving the stately minarets fading slowly into the distance our destination now is England.